Hi everyone, as always, I'm Miss Francois. You should know that by now. I am the host of the Miss Francois Show, MSS for Multi Talented and Super Sexy, where we're about to have some candid conversation, always some kind of entertainment, and I use humor to help you deal with your dysfunctional relationship. Today we kind of have a serious topic. Anyway, so if you all, if I make a little joke about it and you all feel a certain way, that's your problem. Deal with it. But today's guest, we have Shava Gangs. Who is Shava Gangs? She's a divorce specialist, expressive art facilitator, single parent coach, and the founder of A Recreative Re Life. Now, the first thing I was thinking is, what the hell is an expressive art? See, I say ass, but art facilitator i have no clue what it is it just long sound like a fancy title so she better come good when she about to give us some information hi shava hello <laughs> how are you what a great introduction <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much so my thing is before we even get into any full kind of in-depth question about divorce and all that stuff if you are a divorce specialist, you better come good. You better have some kind of sad story to tell me how your man threw you out on the street with the 10 kids or something, because what makes you a specialist in divorce? Oh, perfect question. So I am a therapist, and after I graduated and started to think about uh, starting work and building a private practice, I thought about what speaks to me. Where does my passion lie in terms of what do I have experience with? What do I feel authentic in? coming to the table with and what do I think might contribute and help other people and I was soon realized that the area that I really wanted to focus on was divorce and single parenting because I mean I wasn't thrown out on the street with 10 kids but um, I did go through a divorce I have three children of my own and there's many things that I experienced that I went through and that I had to kind of learn and understand and go through that I wish I would have known at the time. And obviously we all go through what we go through for a reason and I don't, can't change the past, but I'm really passionate and dedicated to giving tools to people that are going through that hard time so that you don't, we don't all have to make the same mistakes. <laughs> Only oh. some of us have to, and then you turn around and you give back. And that's why I, I do the work that I do. Great answer. Obviously, she read that off somewhere off her screen. She had it written down, but we're gonna let her. We're gonna leave her alone, right? Because we like. She's all on the spot. I don't know what's <laughs> coming. <laughs> like life, right? <laughs> so, with that said, the first thing when someone thinks single parent, it sounds like stress and frustration. Like, what is the first thing you tell someone? I'm getting a divorce. I'm about to be. I'm a female. I have three kids, like yourself. What's the first thing you're telling someone like that? Ooh, first, take a deep breath. You got this, right? Every, we, we can, we're never given challenges that we can't handle. And we feel like we are drowning. I know that when I was going through my divorce, I felt like I was just drowning and I was doing my best just to keep my head above water. So time passes, challenges pass, emotions pass, things will be okay. And you will be okay. It just takes a little bit of time. And there are certain tools that are more helpful. And I, would, I will always tell people, take a deep breath. Let's focus on moving forward, moving forward, not moving backwards. While I'm crying through my, doing the whole ugly cry and then looking at these kids, like what I'm going to do with them. And you're like, okay, take a breath. Okay. That, that makes sense. Cause sometimes people like to jump in too quick and you just need to pause for a second. I got that. What's the worst, what, that's the best thing you could do for a divorce. What's the worst thing someone could do when they're about to go through something like that? I, it's hard to answer that the worst. I don't know if there's the worst, but right. one thing that I think is not a great thing to do is to stay stuck in the past. So like I said, moving forward and staying stuck in the past, reliving everything over and over again, not moving on, not letting go. Forget about your partner who you left, your ex. It doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve your children to keep living in the past of the hurts that have been done to you. And in that same way, not taking responsibility for your part. Um, usually there are abuse and really traumatic scenarios, but I'm, I'm talking more in a general way. Right. It takes two. And we, we, we have a dance with somebody. We meet somebody, they do something, we do something. We live in this partnership of this dance. 
it's not always a beautiful dance and it's not always a fun dance, but we tend to really like to blame the other person yeah, for how things go down. And I told him not to do that. And I was right. Cause if he had listened. Exactly. It's <laughs> not like that. So I think a mistake, a very big mistake is to not take responsibility for your part. Because what happens is if you don't take responsibility for your part, very often you'll end up in a very similar relationship. And that's why that happens where people go back right into the same dynamic, same um, disaster. It just happens over and over again. And that's usually because you haven't owned your shit. Oh, I never thought of it like that. I just thought, you know, it's his fault. So when I move on, I'll do better. Okay, check that out. <laughs> and when it comes to divorce, are there stages people go through after a divorce? Like, yeah. So, so what the most common stages that people talk about are um, actually very similar to the stages of grief because, and there's five stages of grief that I'll go through. And the reason why people often compare it is because there's a loss. It's almost like a death has happened. When we get married or we're in a partnership, we're usually so excited. There's so much potential. This is what it's going to look like. We're going to build this great life together. And often enough, it doesn't turn out that way. And if you end in divorce or separation, there's been this death of a dream, of a fantasy, yeah, of a potential for life. Because in every Disney movie, I see the prince and the princess turn around and they live happily ever after. Yeah, Disney has screwed us over so much. I can't, don't even get me started about how Disney has messed us up, how we believe of this fantasy that's going to exist and then it doesn't. But when it doesn't happen, it dies for us. And very often it's very painful. Um, the way we wanted things to be and not turn them not turning out that way is a little bit of a death. And we go through these stages of grief that starts with denial. First, we can't believe this is happening to us. I don't want to believe it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to stay stuck in this um, false reality. And then we have anger. We're so angry. We're angry at ourselves. We're angry at our partner. We're angry at the world. We're angry at everybody. We're just so angry that, that these things are happening to us. And I kind of look at it almost like a mountain. So like we start here at denial at the bottom and we don't want to accept. We just don't want to move. We don't want to do anything. And then we're getting ourselves worked up. We're getting angry. We're starting to climb the mountain. And then when you get to the top of the mountain, the mm. next step is bargaining. And that's when you actually start to take a little bit of responsibility. I'll do this if you stay, or this is, you know, this is my part if you do this part. Okay. And if it doesn't work, we start to come down the mountain. Then, then we hit depression. Now we have, oh, this is really happening. And we get really sad about the reality. And we start to look inwards of how the, our pain is affecting us. And then we get to the bottom, we're on the other side, that's acceptance oh, this is where I am. I've accepted my reality. My divorce is happening. I'm a single parent. My separation is, is done and we're at acceptance. It doesn't mean we're happy there, but yeah. it is at a different place from where we started. So you're on the other side of the mountain. Here's denial. I can't accept this. And once you go over that hump, now you can accept. And that is the moment where change can happen, right? I really, really like to put divorce not as a loss and as a death, as a potential, as an opportunity for change and growth. It wasn't working. And if you can find the parts that you're responsible for, once you get to acceptance and you accept those parts, everything opens up to you. It's a new world. It's a new opportunity. And you can just go wherever you want with it. And it really can be a beautiful stepping stone. I like how, you know, you started, I like your, your whole expression and everything, how you started at the bottom, you got all angry. And the good part is at least when you went down to the bottom, you're like, yay, look to feel, let's go running. I don't know what you're talking about because I still piss. And that's the other thing. Is there like a timeline or is everyone experience is different from all that grief and thing? And do some people even stay at the bottom and not never get back, get over that mountain? There's no timeline. It is all dependent on the person, what you're willing, really it's the more you stay stuck in the past and the more you blame other people, it's almost like their weights holding you down and it's too hard to climb the mountain. So the more you look forward and the more you say, Hey, I'm sure that I did things and I'm sure that I have a part in this pattern and I'm sure there's things that I can change the faster you'll get over it. It's really all about how motivated one person is. And and that could be, okay, so I get the stages, I understand the, the whole pattern and it's different, it's longer for some and not for some, but when you throw kids in the midst of it, because a divorce is one thing, it's just you, 
how you even try to maneuver with kids that's a whole extra added stress it's a, it is a very big added stress and that's what motivated me to do this work because there's so much pain that happens when you go through a divorce so much anger and pain so and that we're trying to deal with personally and then if you have kids they're also going through a loss they're also grieving and they actually are more of the victims they haven't done anything they're just a victim of circumstance but it's very hard to give when you're in such a place of pain and that's why i do the work to kind of give a life preserver like a life vest to people to help them stay afloat so they can give a little to their children when everyone's having such a hard time it's such a hard time because i'm thinking because i'm like what do you even tell your kids because I'm, I'm the, I, I might just take them kids and just drop it off at this house because I, I need to heal. And when I finish heal, I come pick them up. But you know, that's not where you can't do that with everybody. So I'm like, what, what are the things that you tell your kids to make your kids, I guess, okay, or try to understand the situation with mommy and daddy? And oh my God, this is like a two, three part question. And then it comes with the age of the kids. Cause if it's a baby, hey, you're good. Cause you, you might be ha having more of an issue cause it's a baby. But if it's a child that's 10, mm -hmm. what do you tell that kid? So you're exactly right. It always depends. It's the answer is going to be different depending on how old a child is. Is the child 15 or three is a very different answer. But the common theme with how you talk to your children is it always, there isn't always a right, perfect answer. It also depends on what your relationship is like, what your children are like. You have to kind of know where they're at. But one thing that's always works and that's always a good approach is to recognize what they're feeling. You might not have the answers and you might not, I, I always recommend, don't tell them things you don't know is, is gonna be true. You, you know, you can't know everything's gonna be okay. You can't know that they're not gonna be hurt or sad but you can listen to how they're feeling. So, and it's kind of easy in a way because you don't have to have the right answers. All you have to do is listen and say, this must be hard for you. How does this make you feel? I see that you're in so much pain. I see that you're angry. And what I like to say is all feelings are okay. All behavior isn't. And that's true for adults also. <laughs> so you can have whatever feelings you're feeling. That's how you're feeling but all behavior isn't okay. So you can't always act out if you're angry, but you have a right to be angry. You can be in pain. And what happens a lot of times is parents are so overwhelmed when they're going through a divorce, they don't allow their children to feel and process. The, and they're scared. It's a scary thing to hear that your child is in pain because then we feel guilty. Oh, we, put, we gave them that pain and we, we put them in this circumstance, but it's just the reality of life. And, and in some ways, Nobody has an easy life. And the best gift you can give your child is to learn how to get through something that's hard. And the only way through it is to acknowledge your feelings. Hey, it is okay that you're angry. I totally see that. Let's be angry together. I'm angry too. It's okay that you're sad. I, I'm sad too. How are, like, tell me about your sadness. What do you need? And there's no right answer. That's yeah. it. Yeah. This sounds like a lot of work. Because of you, I don't think I want a husband anymore. Because I, I don't even want... To, now I'm thinking I get a husband. If this is what I got to go through, this sounds like too much stress. I just... You know what? Look, you all call me if y'all they just want a one-night stand because I ain't going to get married because you're really depressing me right now. And as for kids, you know what? I'm just going to check out the orphanage and just come drop off some gifts or something because I can't take this kind of stress. Depressing. It's so easy. I'm just saying you had to listen. You're great at listening. That's it. It's so easy. I, I, at that point in time, I would, you know what it is? I'm so, me doing a regular breakup, I'm so worried about myself and my chest pains. And if I'm eating or if I'm not eating, the stress, I can't sleep. I know I got to watch the 10 year old, the three year old. Girl, I, I need to be entered into a madhouse, a hospital. Uh -uh. I already see I got a serious mental problem. So maybe this whole marriage thing in for me, I got to think about it. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back with Shiva. Plus, I have a treat for you all. So stay tuned because mm. I'm that amazing. Okay, Miss Francois, come on right back. Shiva Gans, and these are my parenting minute to win it videos where I give parents one daily, easy to do parenting tip that you can take with you throughout your day because all we can do right now is take it day by day. Hi, welcome back to the Miss Francois Show. If you missed the first half of the segment, shame on you. I mean, really, would you want to miss all of this? I mean, Shiva look nice too. That's my guess. But you really missed all of this? But today we have an amazing guest, Shiva Gangs. She is all about 
helping you with your divorce if you have kids if you don't have kids just helping you heal because you know you've been crying you haven't been eating you haven't been bathing she's here to fix all of that so one of the things i want to get into shiva is the fact that in your your company what's the name of your company again a recreative life Okay, and one of the things you have different approaches to helping different people go through this kind of, I guess, was this called trauma or stress? The, the, is this a significant word? Transition. I like to say transition. transition. Oh, that, that sounds much better because trauma right? sounds like, oh my God, take me off to the hospital, right? So one of the things that I saw, you have something called exp expressive art. Yes. Okay, and when I saw that, I was like, did she just make this up or is this actually a real thing? It's like, actually a real one. thing. Right. So I'm like, that's why I'm like, I, I say exactly what I'm thinking. Because when someone said that, I'm like, I'm about to paint. I, I'm angry. I'm pissed off. I want to kill my husband. And then she tell me expressive art. So explain to me what that is. Okay. So expressive art is a way of um, releasing some of the things that you're feeling in a little bit more of a creative and healthy way. And I'm, I'm going to get a little brain nerdy here, but when we are having conversations or talking, we filter things through a part of our brain called the prefrontal cortex, which is where we, um, we, we, we filter it through logic and we're always wondering how is this going to sound? Am I saying the right thing? Or maybe I'm angry and I'm just speaking without thinking. And we don't often really realize, say really what's inside and what's all the way at the bottom. And when we create, when we use art, we bypass the prefrontal cortex and we speak from a different place. We speak from a place of emotion. So it doesn't always work in the heat of the moment. When you're super angry and you're in the heat of the moment, I wouldn't say to pull out your coloring pencils, but when you calm down a little bit and you wanna process and you wanna relax and you wanna see things in a different way, then we use art, creative art. So music, drama, dancing, visual arts, poetry, to see what can come up. And then we pay attention and you notice, oh, I didn't realize that. You draw a picture and we look at it from a different way of why do you think you put that there? And what did you notice in that picture? And it just is a way of getting to know yourself on a much deeper level. And when, you, when, when you say it's different ways, like it could be drawing, it could be music. Is this something that I already have to like doing that I'm going to, so I have to like drawing to start drawing something or play a particular instrument or? You don't have to like it and it's not about looking it looking pretty or sounding good it's not about what they like to say it's about the process not the product so we're not trying to create a beautiful piece of art we're just trying to create to get our hands dirty to get our brain operating in a different way to look at things in a way we've never looked at it before maybe even to get out of the comfort zone so sometimes it's better if you don't like it because then you push yourself to do something that you don't like and you can notice what it feels like in your body to do that and the all it's all about getting to know yourself better. And that's really what divorce and the transition is an opportunity for. What happened? Why did you, why were you attracted to that relationship? How did you get there? How did you get here? What do you want now? What, you know, really living with intention, understanding who you are and why you made those choices and what choices you can make differently. That's what the goal is in all of these things is getting to know yourself in a deeper way. Okay, I gotta buy myself some crayons. No crayons, problem. that's all you need. Some crayons. This is some cheap therapy. Just yeah. some crayons. I can go figure that out. <laughs> you just need some crayons. And when I was checking out your site and all the things you offer, you had so many different approaches from I see some mindful, somatic attention, positive goal process. You able to process emotional pain but you have different approaches for different things like because like name some of your approaches and how do you know what's going to work for who i listen <laughs> and we see where somebody's okay, at right okay. isn't that wild um at the end of the day i've kind of created my own approach based off of what i see works and what works for me every therapist gets into their own unique style of what they do well and what they like to do and what they see works so I like to challenge people, push them a little bit to think, to take responsibility, to think about where they're at and what they want. And I'll use different approaches based off of that, but I'll see what somebody's goal is. Like, what, what are they trying to get out of the work and what's the best approach to get them to where they want to go? And when it comes to most of your clients, are they men or women? Most of them is women? 
the clients that you have? I see, I see both. It's mostly women. Women are more in tune with their feelings than men are, and they are um, more ready to go to therapy, but not entirely. I don't want to make a generalization, right. uh, but men, um, I think, don't have the same type of language that women have around feelings and- Right, no man is like, I'm a man. I can deal right? with this. I nobody <laughs> telling me nothing. I ain't drawing nothing, lady, okay? I can handle this myself. I know what I'm doing, right? And then the woman's like, oh my God, the world is over. Oh my God, I want him back. And then Shiva is like, come here, draw over, draw, draw an it animal. all out and we'll make it what, all better. What animal are you today? <laughs> Wait, what animal are you today? That's an excellent question. Me, I could, I, I could come work with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just don't do the listening part. Cause as soon as you start to talk, I'm like, I zone out. <laughs> at least I, I know, but I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. I'm not good at listening. Maybe that's why I'm not in a relationship. Can you tell mm -hmm. me that? What approach is that? <laughs> Why do you think you're not in a relationship? Because I'm a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so that means you, you, you might look for somebody who listens well. That would be a good partnership. Yeah, de definitely. Someone that just shut up, let me say what I want to do, and then mm -hmm. I go my way. Good. Thank you. I'm not paying for that, Trevor. <laughs> I'll bill you later. <laughs> I want to come back to kids, right? So when you're helping the, the husband or the wife or whoever is your client, I, is the kids included in this beside them, you know, being able to speak to them and listen to them? Are the kids in, in these exercises? Sometimes there's all different ways to do it. And it really depends how comfortable the parents are. Um, there's approaches that have the whole family together. And we're going to talk about what it looks like to change the way the family looks. You know, and that is wonderful if both parents can come together and be in the same room together for the sake of their children. That's amazing. The more that you can let go of your own stuff and work with your co-parent, the better it will be for you and your children. But it looks all different ways, wherever people are at and what they're comfortable with. But getting the kids involved gives them a place to talk about what they're going through. And I know, obviously, if someone is coming to you is because they're ready for a change, they're ready to do something. But have you had people like, even though they come in, they're reluctant to do some of the things that you're asking them to do? Because again, someone is hurting, they're not like, oh, sure, I'll do this. So how sure. do you? That's a great question. Sure, because we, we want change. We want to get better. We want to know. But sometimes it means looking inside and it's not always that pretty inside. You have to face some dark truths about yourself and about your past. And um, that's not always easy. So it's a process. And it's about just trying to move forward a little bit at a time to where you're at. But it's what people are ready for. And it's since I know you deal with a lot of divorce, but in my mind, because I don't know how, how long are some of these approaches or when you're working with someone, is there a certain period of time you work with someone? Do they request, okay, we're going to work together for two months or how does that work? That's all individual, whatever somebody wants. Um, there are some packages that I offer to, you know, like a six week package to just go through certain things to focus on specific things. And some people see me weekly and they keep going. And some people say, you know, I'm good. I'm going to go to every other week or I'm going to take a break for now. And it really is where, what people want. There's no formula that works exactly for everybody. Okay. So if you all have run out of money, you can't see Shiva anymore. So make exactly. sure you have some money when you come in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because it, it, you know, it, it just seems like a lot. And even, do you even continue on with say someone is with you because some people might stay with you for a, a longer period of time maybe they like you and they're getting a lot from whatever the relationship you all establish so do you stay with them if they start to enter back into like a new relationship sure um yeah i'm not entirely i will only see people who are divorced right. it is I just specialize in divorce, so I understand a lot of the dynamics and a lot of the, the challenges that happen when you're divorced. And that often gets carried into a new relationship. And so that's up to that person, but it's really helpful to have somebody that's looking from the outside in to say, hey, this relationship feels really similar to your last relationship. And have you done the work? And are you ready? And have you let go? And have you really taken ownership of your part? So sometimes it's helpful for somebody else to see it because it's hard to see 
yourself, that part of yourself. Right. Like, and even when you're in a situation, you don't see it. You, it's so much you see. And especially when see it. love yeah. and these emotions enter, you, you, it's a, a bunch of confusion. Yeah. People, people forget are- that in their relationship, the one that ended in a divorce or a separation, yeah. It started usually on a really great note. They forget the beginning part where they were in love and everything was amazing and the person could do no wrong. And then, you know, here you are two years, 10 years, 20 years later and you're divorced. And then we forget that when we fall in love again, everything seems so great. And we forget that things change and love is a chemical. We have a chemical reaction in our bodies that takes over and we're a little bit blinded. Love is blind. So it's really helpful to be very clear on what you want and what your challenges are. Oh, girl, you, you, I thought I had great questions, but you had great answers. Oh. <laughs> we make a good team. We make a good team, that's right. So with yeah. that, Sheva, also, again, thank you so much for coming on and helping. Hope, hopefully the information you passed on or shared with us is going to definitely help someone because sometimes people just need to hear something like that and they, they gravitate to it. And something simple as drawing or using your talent, something like I have never heard that before. So hopefully that it could definitely help someone. So tell everyone where they can reach you, regardless if it's social media or website. Let everybody know how to meet Sheva. Perfect. I'm on Instagram. So Sheva Gans at Sheva Gans, S-H-E-V-A-G-A-N-Z. I post a lot of information and fun stuff on my Instagram or you can find my website, chevagans.com, and you can email me through the website, info at chevagans.com. Um, I'm pretty accessible on all of those social platforms, and I'm happy to hear from anybody and answer any questions and um, see if I can give you support or any resources. So please feel free to reach out. And so don't worry, I'm going to put everything at the bottom because I know some of y'all didn't have a pen. Some of y'all can't read, so can't write, don't understand what's going on, can't spell sugar. So don't worry, I got you. Just look at the bottom. You're going to get all her information and you're welcome. So thanks again, everyone, for checking out the Miss Friends for Show. Remember, you can check me on all social media. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm always there. I'm amazing. I look good in person and on any medium. With that said, Definitely check me out. And remember, Miss Francois, multi-talented and super sexy, is always saying exactly what you're thinking. Have an awesome evening, everyone. Bye. Bye, Sheva. Say bye. bye.